This video series focuses on the elements of design, lines, shapes, forms, spaces, textures, and colors. This video focuses specifically on forms. Instructions and printable pages for five art exercises are included. There are nine videos in this series. Be sure to start by watching the introduction and then come back to this video. Let's take a closer look at forms. Recall that a line begins with a point. Lines can describe the edges of shapes and forms. Shapes are two-dimensional and flat. Forms are three-dimensional and have volume. Space is the area around lines, shapes, and forms. Negative space is the outside, and positive space is the inside of shapes and forms. So lines, shapes, forms, and space need to be grouped together. We cannot think of one without thinking of the others. These terms agree with curriculum-aligned mathematical terms. Geometric forms are mathematical. Organic forms are natural. When we think of forms in artwork, we can think of actual three-dimensional forms, such as sculpture or architecture. Or we can think of the illusion of three-dimensional forms that we create on flat surfaces, such as drawings and paintings of forms. We will take a look at both of these approaches in this video, with art exercises for both. Let's start with actual three-dimensional forms. In this four-part art exercise, we will create three-dimensional pop-ups from geometric shapes. Geometric shapes and forms are mathematical. These pop-ups are designed to fold flat so that they can be added to your sketchbook. Let's start with the pyramid pop-up. Printable worksheets are provided. Cut out the pyramid template and fold along all of the dashed lines. Make a pyramid form by gluing the flap. Cut out the base and fold along the central dashed line. Align flap A on your pyramid with A on the base and glue. Align flap B on your pyramid with B on the base and glue. This pyramid form will fold flat. Take your time to cut and fold accurately. Don't use too much glue. You could use clear tape instead if you wish. This three-dimensional form is made with different two-dimensional shapes. Which geometric shapes can you find? Let's create the half-sphere pop-up. Printable worksheets are provided. Cut out the two form templates and fold along all of the dashed lines. Make two forms by gluing the flaps. Cut out the base and fold along the central dashed line. Align the pie shape A on your form with the pie shape A on the base and glue. Align the pie shape B on your form with the pie shape B on the base and glue. This half sphere form will fold flat. Take your time to cut and fold accurately. Don't use too much glue. If you like, you can use clear tape instead. This three-dimensional form is made with different two-dimensional shapes. Which geometric shapes can you find? Let's create the diamond pop-up. Printable worksheets are provided. Cut out the three diamond templates and fold along all of the dashed lines. Make three diamond forms by gluing the flaps. 
Cut out the base and fold along the central dashed line. Align the fold of diamond A with the central fold on the base. Glue it in place. Align the fold of diamond B with the central fold on the base. Align the fold of diamond C with the central fold on the base. This diamond form will fold flat. Take your time to cut and fold accurately. Don't use too much glue. You could use clear tape instead if you wish. This three-dimensional form is made with different two-dimensional shapes. Which geometric shapes can you find? Let's create the hexagon pop-up. Printable worksheets are provided. Cut out the four hexagon templates and fold along all of the dashed lines. Make the four forms by gluing the flaps. Cut out the base and fold along the central dashed line. Align forms B and C with the central fold on the base and glue. Align forms A and D with the hexagon shapes on the base and glue. Glue the sides between A and B, between B and C, and between C and D. This hexagon form will fold flat. Take your time to cut and fold accurately. Don't use too much glue. You could use clear tape instead if you wish. This three-dimensional form is made with two-dimensional shapes. Which geometric shapes can you find? Now that you have tried these geometric pop-ups, can you invent your own? In this two-part art exercise, we will create three-dimensional pop-ups with organic shapes. Organic shapes and forms are natural. These pop-ups are designed to fold flat so that they can be added to your sketchbook. Let's create a pop-up storybook. Printable worksheets are provided. Start by drawing a picture on your pop-up picture panel. The picture must fit within the space. Draw a line along the top edge of your picture, connecting point A and point B. Cut out your pop-up picture panel. Fold along the dashed lines. Cut out the base and fold along the central dashed line. Align C on your pop-up picture panel with C on the base and glue. Align D on your pop-up picture panel with D on the base and glue. Add additional drawings to the base if you wish. Use the grey lines to write a story. Make lots of pages for your pop-up book. This pop-up form will fold flat. Take your time to cut and fold accurately. Don't use too much glue. You could use clear tape instead if you wish. Let's create a three-layer pop-up. Printable worksheets are provided. 
Start by creating three pop-up panels, one for the background, one for the middle ground, and another for the foreground. In a work of art, foreground refers to objects that appear closest to the viewer. Middle ground refers to objects that appear to be a little further away, and background refers to objects that appear to be the furthest away. For each of these panels, draw a wavy line from A to B within the rectangle. Avoid the grey box. You could draw a picture within this space on each panel. Cut along your wavy line and along the bottom baseline. Cut out the two rectangular prism templates and fold along all of the dashed lines. Make two forms by gluing the flaps. Cut out the base and fold along the central dashed line. Add form A to the base aligning with shape A and glue. Add the background pop-up panel and glue. Add the middle ground pop-up panel and glue. Add form B to the base aligning with shape B and glue. Add the foreground pop-up panel and glue. Carefully add glue between all of the panels and rectangular prisms. This three-layer pop-up form will fold flat. Take your time to cut and fold accurately. Don't use too much glue. You could use clear tape instead if you wish. Recall that when we think of forms in artwork, we can think of actual three-dimensional forms, or we can think of the illusion of three-dimensional forms. We created actual three-dimensional forms with the pop-up art exercises. Now, let's take a look at the illusion of form in these three art exercises. We will start with layering to create the feeling of volume and form. Alex Coville is a famous Canadian artist. He created the illusion of three-dimensional space and depth by layering objects. Let's try it. Create the illusion of form and depth of space in an underwater world. Use the worksheets provided. Start by making a booklet that is about 8.5 by 11 inches. It should have three pages. The bottom page should be blue paper. It will represent the background. Objects placed on this page will be the furthest away. The next page should be tracing paper. It will represent the middle ground. The top page should also be tracing paper. It will represent the foreground. Objects placed on this page will be the closest. Staple your pages together at the top. Add fish and sea creatures to each layer. Color and cut out the fish provided, or create your own. Overlap the fish shapes to create a feeling of space. Some fish look like they are closer. Other fish look like they are further away. The tracing paper creates softer colors for fish that are further away.
Let's take another look at how famous artists created the illusion of form in their artwork. Leonardo da Vinci is a famous artist. He used shading in his painting to create a feeling of volume and depth. Let's try shading. Follow along with the worksheet provided. Let's shade these three forms. Forms can be divided into light, medium, and dark areas. Press hard with your pencil in the darkest areas to create a dark shade. Press very lightly with your pencil in the lightest areas. Blend smoothly between the darkest and lightest areas to create a medium value. Add a medium dark value for reflected light. Blend everything smoothly. Add a cast shadow. You have created the illusion of form. Let's take another look at how famous artists created the illusion of form in their artwork. Raphael is a famous artist. He used one-point perspective in his painting to create the feeling of volume and depth. Let's try one-point perspective. Follow along with the worksheet provided for this art exercise. First, draw a horizon line. Add a vanishing point. Draw the front face of a building. Draw guidelines that connect the corners with the vanishing point. Draw a vertical line for the back edge of the building. Draw the side of the building. Use horizontal and vertical lines to draw windows on the front face of the building. Find the middle of the side of the building by drawing guidelines that connect the corners. Draw a vertical line through the intersection. This is the center of the side of the building. Repeat this process for more intervals. Add guidelines for the tops and bottoms of the windows. Draw vertical lines from the intersections. Add more detail. Repeat the same process for other objects. Use a different vanishing point to create cast shadows. Let's take another look at how famous artists created the illusion of form in their artwork. Edward Hopper is a famous American artist. He used two-point perspective in his painting to create the feeling of volume and depth. Let's try two-point perspective. Follow along with the worksheet provided for this art exercise. Draw a horizon line. Add two vanishing points. Draw a vertical line for the closest corner of your building. Draw guidelines that connect the corners with the vanishing points. Draw vertical lines for the edges of your building. Draw the back unseen walls too. Draw guidelines that connect the corners with the vanishing points. Draw a vertical line between the intersections for the unseen edge. The unseen parts of the structure will help you to draw accurately. Find the middles of the sides of the building by drawing guidelines that connect the corners. 
Draw vertical lines through the intersections. Draw a peak for your roof. Use the center line. Complete the roof by using the vanishing point. Add details. Use the vanishing points and vertical lines. Use a different vanishing point to create a cast shadow. Tell me about your artwork with forms in the comments below.